So I arrived right at sunset, uh, came up after work, um, immediately had to set about setting up the tent because, well, it, it was my only daylight hours, but it went up pretty quick. There we go. Uh, in the tent, uh, the uh, the only light I've got right now, uh, apart from the one on my camera, is, uh, is my iPod that's, that's giving me some illumination. Uh, I'm going to start inflating the mattress. That's what I'm going to be sleeping on tonight. Uh, now, uh, the mattress itself is actually more like a boat. It, it's it's an, it's an inflatable boat. Um, that'll be what I'm actually sleeping on tonight. You'd be amazed at how comfy it is. Uh, it's uh, about seven, quarter past seven. Uh, just enjoying the sounds. Just uh, listening to the birds. Do a little 360 here, give you an idea of the setup. I uh, I slept in my clothes inside uh, inside my sleeping bag. You know, I had a little uh, kind of a fleece blanket over top of that again. So it was actually really warm. Um, it wasn't cold at all, mind you. It's the middle of July, so I can't imagine it should be any too terribly uh, cold. Yeah, it was great. Slept fine. Probably better than what I would have in the car. So, no complaints there. Hmm. Just listening. It's nice. Our dining pleasure this morning, we have uh, coconut chocolate donuts. We also have a can of pineapple, for which I did actually bring a can opener. Didn't eat them, though. Uh, a couple of peanuts and a few drink boxes. Give you a little bit better idea of the setup here. Uh, this is inside the tent, still with the mattress inflated and all ready to sleep even. This is just before I started packing up, but it uh, gives you a good idea of how well. Uh, compact everything was. You really couldn't ask for a more beautiful morning. It was still calm, quiet, no wind, not a cloud in the sky. Really beautiful. Uh, sun was shining. And in signature Chris fashion, I'll give you a better idea of how things looked from above. Uh, of course, I could not resist climbing the trees that were right there beside my uh, my site. Uh, had to get a better view. Of course, a better view of the campsite. I had to also include a better view of the surrounding environs. I uh, had to get a view of the water from my campsite. Um, oh, and a uh, little spider web but mostly the water. I should probably tell you why I even came out here. Uh, the whole plan was to come and visit the Five Islands National Park, which is just close to Parsboro, Nova Scotia. Uh, I had been driving by a couple weeks just prior to this, and uh, I absolutely had to come back. It was a beautiful, beautiful place. And uh, when I heard that there were actual islands in the Five Islands Park, you know, aptly named, I had to bring a boat. I wanted to bring my parents' canoe, but it just was a little bit harder to arrange. But I did have a boat available to me. It was just a little 
you know, rubber inflatable raft, really. Uh, I call it my dinghy. But, uh, you know, I, I knew I could do it. And, well, I thought I could do it, but I had to try. I'm sure you can understand. I mean, when you look at this place, it's hard to imagine not wanting to come and, you know, explore it fully. Well, I mean, you can just see for yourself. So I went down to the beach, where I unexpectedly found a rather unusual sight. Didn't expect to see uh, evolution fish etched into the sandstone rock. But yeah, I mean, there was lots of rock formations that I didn't recognize. Uh, a lot of sandstone. But uh, yeah, it was just, uh, well, a short hike down to the shore. I did get a little distracted once I got down there, though. I wasn't told that there was a little rock, for well, little rock formation, a huge rock formation just jetting up from the shore uh, right there at the beach. So I had to climb it. And so I walked over and checked around. I did make it up, but only about halfway. It turned out to be a lot more dangerous than it looked like from below. Uh, a lot of the rocks were very uh, crumbly and you know, really hard to get a good handle hold on. So I end up getting about roughly that high. But I had to get back on track. I had to turn my attention to what I came here for, which was getting out to the islands. At low tide, virtually anywhere you walked was just a mess of mud. Uh, I had to walk through it barefoot, but, I mean, hey, a little bit of clay between your toes isn't going to do you any harm. But I had already made it to the first island, and it was the biggest of all of them, so there was certainly things to explore. Very interesting rock formations. Um, I'd never seen... Uh, rocks, beach rocks, that looked like this. Uh, it was just naturally covered in little wavy ripples. Very unusual. One of the first things that I noticed when I got there and up on the shore was not just nature, but signs of man. I found a little campsite. Uh, it looked well abandoned, 
but there was a fireplace, a tent, a couple of hammocks. I did eventually go in, you know, in and explore, but I think it had been, a, you know, empty for a very long time. found a couple of caves, or, well, I suppose they weren't caves, they were just big indents in the shoreline, but it was the closest to something like a cave that I'd seen in a very long time, so I had to explore them a little more. This is looking back on where I had been earlier. This is the rocks that I had climbed. So just gives you an idea how far I'd come just, well, in that part of the morning anyway. Oh, hey, look, more caves. much more so than before. These, or well at least this one, was more like an actual cave. It didn't go very deep, maybe only a handful of meters, but still pretty cool. And there's my boat again. I was pretty much portaging across the island. Uh, I wanted to have my boat with me so that I could, you know, continue on to the next island. They were sort of in a chain. So that meant, well, carrying the boat with me. But, I mean, since it's all air anyway, it's incredibly light. You really wouldn't feel it at all. Um, it was no heavier than my backpack. And, well, I mean, I only had a handful of things in there, too. And another false cave turned out to just be a bump in the rocks. Man. Oh well. On to the next one. Uh, I just headed straight for the next island after this. So the island that I was just leaving there in the background is Moose Island. And uh, the next one that I was headed for was Diamond Island. Now mind you, the tide was already starting to come in by this time, so it, eh, well, it was a lot harder getting landed. Uh, I tried going around the island, or around the other side of it, just a briefly, but the wind had started to pick up, so it made it, well, very, very difficult to do, well, just about anything, really. Didn't get to spend a whole lot of time with this one. I did get ashore, but mm, didn't get really much of a chance to see any of it. I didn't climb up or anything. It was, well, all sheer cliffs, so that I don't think there would have been any getting up there, I mean, unless you were a professional climber or something to that effect. But it was fun just going around in the boat. I did head back for Moose Island in fairly short order. 
But the tide had come in enough that there was virtually no coastline left. All the beach that I had been walking across to get it, you know, over there had gone, well, pretty much away. So I had to pretty much paddle back around the island. A little hard on the arms, but I made it fine. So it turns out that the rock formation that I had climbed was called the Old Woman. Uh, by the time I was headed back, it had been completely engulfed by water, making the distance that I had to row twice as long, if not probably more. But it was fine. So for my first time here at this uh, park, I got to camp tent, even played a little bit of guitar, went tree climbing, hiked down to the beach, well, hiked across the island for that matter, got to grow, do some boating. It was a pretty full weekend for only about 28 hours that I was gone from my place. Really amazing, though. Fantastic views. Coming back here in a heartbeat. <laughs>